What is up guys, welcome and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Day and on this channel I talk about cybersecurity. Um, I just wanted to do a quick video on um, what Sigma is um, in terms of cybersecurity um, and um, essentially um, what it's used for. So uh, Sigma, this is the page, this is the page right here um, for uh, Sigma. It's an open source, uh, generic and open signature format that allows you to describe relevant public events in a straightforward manner. Um, the rule format is very flexible, it's easy to write and applicable to any type of log file. The main purpose of this project is to provide a structured form in which researchers or analysts can describe their once developed detection methods and make them shareable with others. So essentially what you can use this for is um, essentially describe like detection methods or like write like uh, uh, SIM queries for like um, SIM platforms like Elastic or Splunk. Um, you could also use it for like, you know, uh, uh, for signatures, you know, based off of like IOCs. Um, and we're going to look at that in a second, uh, but essentially, um, this is how it works. So like the Sigma format, and then you put it in a Sigma converter, and then that kind of turns it into like a, uh, you can use this to search, to create like elastic search queries or like Splunk queries, or I also think you can also do, um, curator queries as well. And we'll, we'll look at that in a second. So, um, uh, what else? Uh, so use cases you have a you can describe your detection method in Sigma to make it shareable um, You can write your sim searches in Sigma to avoid a vendor login You can share the signature in the appendix of your analysis along with IOCs and Yara You can use it for threat in Intel um, and You can provide signatures for malicious behaviors So it's essentially a really good tool for like, you know threat detection um, you know, querying your environment for specific like IOCs or, you know, creating signatures and stuff like that. So, um, there, here are some examples of like what it looks like. So it's really, it has a really, um, uh, I think it's, it's really in the, uh, YAML format. So it, it's easily readable and it's, it can easily be tweaked. So for example, you have this, um, access to LSAS process with certain, ta uh, um, access mask. So this is, um, you know, here, like you have the title, the description, and I'm going to go over like what these different, um, uh, parameters are for, or like the schema is. So the title is essentially like a description, like, uh, uh, of what the rule is. Um, sometimes you might have like an ID or something like that. Um, I think some rules have IDs, but you might have an ID. Um, there's like a unique identifier for the rule. Um, then you have the description, which essentially pretty much just describes, you know, what the rule is doing and what it's trying to do. Um, the status so you're trying to put like a uh you're trying to you're trying to explain like you know what the state of the rule is so it might be this one is like experimental so maybe you're just trying to test something or it could be um you know it could be anything so it could be maybe in progress maybe you're trying to, you're still trying to develop the rule and then we have reference so essentially it's like uh, maybe like some um may uh some some domains or some urls or like blogs or articles that kind of give some information about uh what this uh detection is for or what this um what this rule is for then uh now get into the deeper stuff so you have the log store so this is essentially um what's log is in what log in the sim is required for this rule so what log in the sim are we going to be uh, using this rule against um, and then, for example, here you have product. So this is like Windows. Um, you could have like uh, like the log source, uh, like a category for the log source, maybe like um, DNS logs, maybe SMB logs or FTP logs or something like that. But here it's like uh, Windows logs. So you're going to have like um, the event logs. So this is specifically security logs. Uh, it also specifies like the, secure, uh, the event ID, process name, access mask, object type. So depending on what kind of log it is, um, it could have like different um, uh, sub parameters. And then um, you also have like false positive. So this is unknown, but just in case, like maybe you have maybe like uh, testing test and activity or like vulnerability scan activity, those would be like some examples of like false positives. And then the level here is high. So essentially like um, describing like uh, how urgent this, you know, rule is or how this alert is. So it could be high, medium, low, or depending on whatever um, you deem the, uh, the, the, the rule to be. And then you could also have tags at the bottom, uh, just kind of describing, um, maybe matching it to like a um, MITRE attack framework or something like that. So let's just, just kind of like just, you know, take a quick look, a simple look at um, how uh, this Sigma tool can be used. So I essentially just went on Sigma to find this uh, log4j um, uh, rule. 
Um, it, uh, if you know anything about cybersecurity community right now, the look for J uh, vulnerabilities, like play in the cybersecurity community. So I feel like it would be a, a really good um, example to kind of check out. So um, this is this is the uh, the Sigma rule for the log for J. As you can see, it was written on 10th and it has been modified recently. Um, we have all the references, so log source. So we can modify this, right? Maybe our, our log source is not maybe a web server. Maybe it's something else. We can specify that. And we can specify the queries, like the different things. So for example, user agent contains any of these particular things um, or um, whatever um, other parameters we could use. So based off of like the different um, the different strings and payloads that the uh, log4j vulnerability uses, we can specify them in here. Um, and we can also change them to, you know, for example, if it's not a web server that might be affected, we can change that as well. And so, for example, if we copy this, for example, um, um, apart from like uh, what we're going to do, of course, you can, you know, change, you can tweak it for your particular environment. So we can paste it here in this website called um, uncoder.io. So we specify it's a Sigma rule, right? And then we can easily translate it to, for example, let's see an elastic query, right? And it will give us like an elastic query for it. If we use curator, we could also use a, a curator query for it. Um, if we use Splunk, we could also create like a Splunk query for it, right? And it gives us a Splunk query. If we use like a, uh, if we want to create like an alert in Splunk, we could also do the same thing. Um, let's just look at a simpler one um, that is not, you know, this in depth or complicated. Um, let's see, rules. Let's look at, for example, maybe cloud. Maybe we're, we're working in a cloud environment, um, AWS, for example. Um, and let's see uh s3 let's try to find s3 like s3 misconfiguration okay s3 data management or something like that okay okay let's let's grab this all right and you know obviously you can see like there's some contributors here so you can create like a sigma rule and you know share with the community um that's you know something that could help the community with you know detection and stuff like that so for example this is like a, um, s3 data management let's look at it here so it has an id so that's like a unique identifier and then the description pretty much detects like when a user tampers with s3 data management in aws um, this is the author and the status is like experimental um, this is when it was written this was when it was last modified and here are some resources so like maybe a, a list to like elastic detections a list to like s3 um, API stuff in AWS, uh, the log source. So this is different now. This is AWS, and then we're using CloudTrail because that's like how we like uh, monitor cloud activity. And then detection, selection, event source, um, S3, Amazon. So event name. So this is like what if you're if you're familiar with like looking at um, AWS logs. So these are like um, what you would see like in um, in the back end. If for example like in Splunk, so you'd see like the event activity. So the event name maybe like put in put bucket login, put bucket website. Any specific event name that would match for this S3 data management tampering, we specify there, and then condition selection, which is this, and then level, this is low, and tags. Now we have this like matter attack, um, you know, uh, tags here, and if we try to maybe look at this, um, let's copy this. It should it should have like some results with like like matter attack or something. So we can see here transfer data to cloud um, T1537. And we see that this is something that is related to the Sigma rule we have here. And then we have false positive. So for example, if an S3 configuration um, ch change may be done by system or network administrator, so we can verify user activity, blah, blah, blah. So you kind of get the idea, right? So it's really, um, it's, it's really, you know, easy. And then we can now copy this and then paste it here. So for example, we can convert it to like Elastic Query if we use Elastic. Right, so this is a simple Elastic query based off of this Sigma rule. We can, if we use Curator, we can use, do that. If we use Splunk, we could, um, you know, use that as well, and it, it would create this query for us. Uh, if we want to create a Splunk alert, the same thing. So that's kind of like a high level overview of like how Sigma works. I'm currently working on a project um, where I'm gonna like design a really simple threat detection lab, um, where uh, we're gonna um, you know use Splunk, Windows, Atomic Red, and Sigma rules. So essentially, we're gonna be forwarding Windows logs to Splunk, and then we're gonna be testing certain like matter attack things with um, Atomic Red, and then we're gonna be writing our own detection rules in Sigma and testing them. Um, to see if we can maybe find queries in Splunk or create alerts in Splunk to uh, detect those things. So that's currently in the works. Um, I hope 
to probably release it by the end of the year or probably early next year so keep an eye out for that on my main channel uh day cyberwalks but that's it for this video thank you very much for watching this video i hope you liked the video please be sure to smash the like button and um subscribe if you're new subscribe and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye